Hi everybody, I'm Joyce and I'm an art teacher. I teach studio and I also teach art history. And I'm just going to show you my process for uh, making demonstration videos and uploading them to YouTube so that students can easily access the video demonstrations. You can also take the video that you created and embed it in a PowerPoint or in a um, Google presentation and um, and show the demonstration and it will be very clear and easy for them to see. So just to start off with, I use this thing right here. It's, a, it's, it's just a phone stand and I use my iPhone to record videos. So it has a little attachment on the end here like this that you open up and um, you put your phone in it like this and then you can position it over your artwork like this. Um, this. This particular phone stand that I have is called an Archon Pro phone stand and um, I like it because it has an adjustable neck here so you could put it on the floor, you could put it on the table, you could make it higher if you want. It um, also has a very heavy base so it doesn't tip over very easily and um, this can be adjusted so you know you could have it like looking at you directly or you could have it like an aerial view over the top while you work. So um, for me this is really an important part of my process. So I got it on Amazon I think for like $75. Um, but I'm sure there are other versions or brands that work just as well. So um, Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is uh, how to make the video and then how to upload it to YouTube. And then I also um, use, I record my presentations with a system called Screencast-O-Matic and I'll show you that sort of briefly too. So I should also say that I am not a tech expert by any means. Um, I just, uh, I was trying to figure out the easiest way for me to, to show demonstrations. I was getting frustrated because I had the Zoom meeting or the meetup meeting on the, you know, with my class and then I was trying to angle my, my screen down so that it could, you know, show and it was just too hard and I couldn't figure out how to hook up my iPhone while also being connected. You know, I'm sure there's a way to do that, and if anybody knows that, I'd love to know how to do that. So this is this is how I've been doing it. So like I said, I use my iPhone, I take a video, and I do it, you know, with this, this very nifty little phone holder. Once I have the um, video on my phone, I um, airdrop it to my computer, once you have a YouTube channel, you can actually directly upload it from your phone, which is probably easier. It's like one less step. Um, I like to do it on my computer because it just makes it, like, it just feels better because it's bigger. Um, that's up to you. So I'm going to show you the first time I made the video was, oh, okay, let me switch this here. Okay. Um, all right. So this is the first time, oh, notice that when I make my presentations, I do leave this like a little bit of space over here on the right hand side because um, there's usually either like a um, row of students there or my face and this webcam thing. So I leave a little space over that because, you know, especially with art and with text and everything, there's like, I don't want my face or anybody else's face going over it. So that's why I leave a little bit of space over to the right. So here's a video. This is when I first started doing it. As you can see, I have this video at an angle. So I sort of like held this thing up like this and I was like, hi, this is what we're going to do today. And then I just sort of moved this whole thing over to the side. And as you can see, this is um, this, it, you can see it's sort of like this demonstration too. I like this angle because it's, you can see like my palettes, you can see the color wheel I have, and, and you can see like me actually working. But I can't say that this is my favorite way to do it. I'm going to show a little tiny clip of this. Um, or blue, we want it to look mixed together. 
together, which is a gray. Um, you can also try different blues, you know? And you can also try orange, because blue and orange are complementary colors. So maybe you try this blue, and you can try it with this orange. Let's see what happens when you pull those together. Sometimes you get a warmer color gray, sometimes you get a cooler color gray. Okay. I think you get the, I think you get the point. Oops. All right. So I think you get the point. So then, um, with this one, all right. So here is the advertisement for this Archon Pro phone stand. <laughs> uh, you can see that it's also bakers use it and you, it has this like air, they have it set up directly over the top. So in my next video, I'll show you the difference of what that looks like because I sort of found that to be a little bit clearer. So here's what this looks like in my demonstration video. Okay, so um, obviously I, I haven't finished this, but I just wanted to show you how I would do the inside of this. This is dry now because I've waited a while. So I'm going to, well, according to the picture, there seems to be some green in, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix up my green here. Uh, there seems to be some green in the fields. If you just, so it's up to you. You can put green in between here. You can put green in here. It's, uh, it's, it's really totally up to you. So I would do something like this where I would just sort of fill in some of these spaces with some green okay. and this will give the impression. So you get the idea with that. Um, <laughs> so, so those are two different ways to do it. I really like the stand because I like the aerial view and then the students can see very clearly over my entire project. Okay, so now this is a screenshot. Oh, you can't see it because my face is in the way. All right, so yeah, see how I'm covering it with my face here and I don't even know, maybe I can move myself off the screen for a second. <laughs> do move my face down here okay so this is my YouTube channel and um, as you can see uh, it's kind of nice once you get it set up it's very easy to set up um, it will show you can um, customize your channel create a video or a post up here this little camera that's also how you create a video post and uh, here you can click like when you click on videos it shows all the videos that I made um, any of the channels that I subscribe to, any playlists that I have, all of that. Um, you can see right now I have seven whole subscribers. <laughs> um, my goal is not to be a YouTuber, so I'm fine with having only seven subscribers. Uh, mine is purely functional because I want my students to be able to take the um, YouTube link and be able to watch the demonstration or the art history presentation and I just think it's like an easier, it's just easier. Um, and it's, you know, everybody has YouTube and it's easy. So, okay. So to create uh, your own personal channel, I guess I can move myself up here again. So to create your own personal channel, you can just follow these instructions. You can pause the video and do this. Uh, I also have a video tutorial from YouTube telling you how to do this which is more visual, and I know you're all visual people, so I'm gonna show that video in just a minute. Um, you basically just sign into YouTube on a computer or you use the mobile site. Try any action that requires a channel, such as uploading a video, posting a comment, or creating a playlist. If you don't have a channel, you can prompt uh, to create a channel, and then, um, yeah, check the details. It's pretty easy. I think that they have you confirm the new channel, and then, and then you're done. Okay. Once you have your um, your artworks uploaded to the YouTube channel and you have like a video link, you can then take that link and embed it into your PowerPoint presentation or into your Google Slides presentation and it will pop up like a video, kind of like I did here. So you could imagine that if I was showing this vid if I was showing this presentation, and this was one of the slides, it would be easy for the students who were part of the Zoom meeting or part of the, you know, Google, like the meetup or whatever, to see the demonstration quite clearly. Okay, so once you have that, I'll just show you how to, um, how to uh, 
uh, to um, embed it. Well, actually, first I'll show you how to upload the, the video, okay? So this is um, my YouTube channel. Um, okay, this is my dashboard. Okay, so, okay, so up here, if you see, this is where you do create. If I push create, upload videos. Okay, so keep in mind that I took a video that I made earlier and I, um, a video that I did earlier, I, um, I took my phone and I, um, airdropped it to my Mac. So that's how I got it on my computer. So basically, this is pretty easy too. Um, I'm sure you already know how to do this. But for example, I went to the video that I want. Okay, so I went to this video. All right, this is a video I made just earlier today. I click on the share. And then when I shared it, my MacBook Air pops up. So I can share it with that. You hear the little beep, beep, beep. So that means that it is shared. Now it is on my computer. Then it's easy for me to just drag and drop it in. Oh no, you probably didn't even see that. I'm so sorry. See, you know what? I, sh <laughs> I should also say in the video that I watched about remote learning, they did say that it's important for you to create your own videos for lots of reasons it's important for you to create your own videos because you get exactly what you want and not to e over edit them because students want to see uh, your personality and they want to see, you know, when you're teaching, you can't edit out when you mess up. So, you know, the same thing with the remote. I think I just recorded this and you, I was showing you how to airdrop something and my face and my demonstration wasn't even on in the part of the screen that was being recorded. So I'm gonna show you now again, cause I don't think you saw it before. Okay, sorry. I could edit this out, but that's going against the principles that I was taught. So, all right, here's the video that I made earlier. If I want to send this video to my Mac, I just do share, right? It has people come up. I don't wanna share it with any of those people, but I am gonna do airdrop. And then on here, it has devices. I do not want to send it to my neighbor, Maria. I will send it to my MacBook Air. So I click that. And then you heard the little doo -doo -doo. And then that is ensuring that it is being uploaded to my computer. Okay? All right. So once we have that, we're back to this versus drag and drop video file to upload. I'm going to go to my um, what was uploaded today which is this one, um, which I just uploaded. So I'm going to drop that in there. As you can see by this little icon thing, it has, it's uploaded. It wants me to put a title in here. It's required. Um, I'm going to title that um, uh, intro. I mean, you can do something more elaborate, but that was my little introduction to you guys. Um, down here, it's going to give you some thumbnails to show as like the screen, um, to show as the, whatever, the title page of your video. Um, you could upload a thumbnail if you prefer to do that. Is it made for kids? Yes. I don't know what happens if you push no, it's not made for kids. Um, I've never made a video not for kids, so I don't know what happens. Okay, over here, you push next. This next screen is nothing that I know of. And then on this one, visibility, you can set it to private so only you and people you choose can watch your video. You can set it to unlisted, which means that you can take the link and send it. Uh, whoever has the link can watch it. Or if you set it to public, then everybody can watch the video. That means that they could technically do a search, like a YouTube search for it, and it will pop up. Um, I sometimes do unlisted. Uh, I do unlisted and sometimes I do public. It just depends. If it's for class, I usually make it public just to make it like extra easy for people to find it. Um, if it's something that I only want certain people to have, then I would do unlisted. I'm not sure what private does. Okay, and then you push publish, which is in the lower right hand corner. 
and you can see that the video is processing and it just takes a minute. So, okay, so I'm going to go back to, while that's processing, um, I'm going to go back to here. Okay, so, oops, sorry. Okay, so, um, all right, we're back to my presentation. So now that I have my, um, video is uploaded to the YouTube channel, I could get the YouTube link. You know, we've all seen a YouTube link. And then I um, am just going to embed it into my presentation. So I have a new slide. I'm going to go up to here where it says insert. I'm going to do video, insert video. Then I'm going to paste the link into here, you search it, and then this is the video comes up. It should be your video that you made that comes up. You click on that, and then down here in the bottom is this select. You select it, and then as you can see, that video that I made is gonna get popped into this slide. I usually just stretch it so that it fills the space a little bit, um, and that's it. And like I said, I. Um, I make it so that there's some space over the side in case I'm doing like a web thing like I'm doing now or whatever. So yeah, so that's it. I feel like that's fairly, it's like kind of easy peasy. And if you're given your lesson and you have this presentation, you can just go along and uh, show your presentation and then your demonstration video is right there in it, which I think is kind of cool. Okay. So the next thing is how am I getting this recorded, right? Um, there are multiple ways to record your screen and I can only assume that many of you have already figured out how to record your screen. I think that, you know, if you're in the, um, if you're doing like a Zoom, you could record the Zoom class. You could, um, there's something within the um, Google Drive, I think that you can also record it. So um, my way is I got this thing. So this is Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, it is a service that is free if you make videos that are less than like 20 or 30 minutes, which I think a lot of people do make videos that are less than 20. Or, I mean, they should sort of be less than 20 or 30 minutes. Um, when I'm teaching art history, I'm just very long-winded and my some of them go like 45 minutes or an hour and I didn't want to have to deal with breaking it up into two videos so I splurged the $36 for three years to get the um, to get the to whatever I, I paid for I paid for this so but it's it's not that much it's like $12 a year but you can get the free version if you want I just think it's really easy to um, do. So basically you have a lot of options like right now I'm showing this where I have like I'm showing my screen but I'm also have the webcast of my face in the screen. I could make it just me, right? Um, so this is me with the screen and then the other option is to just show the screen which isn't like showing right now but that's okay. You just click here which is the um, which is the button to record your screen and then it's just you just follow the prompts it's very very easy at the end it makes a video for you you save the video um, and then in some cases I upload that video to my YouTube channel for people to see my presentation so if it was an art history presentation that I go through the whole thing then I can upload it to, to YouTube and then my students can see can see that so so yeah, so it's pretty easy. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just end with showing you this. You can, I don't know, actually, like I said, I'm not a techie, I don't know how to get rid of my face from this, so I apologize that you're gonna watch my face while you see this video of how to sign up for the YouTube, how to sign up for YouTube and how to create your own channel. And uh, you could also easily YouTube, like how to create a YouTube channel, and this will come up. I think it's only like three minutes long. To get the most out of YouTube, you'll need to sign in with a Google account.
if you want to upload videos, you'll also need to create a YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you how to get a Google account and use it to sign into YouTube and create a YouTube channel. Keep in mind that a Google account and a YouTube channel are not exactly the same thing. If you have a Google account, you can use it to sign into YouTube to like videos and subscribe to your favorite creators. When signed in, you'll also get personalized video recommendations based on your activity. Having a YouTube channel lets you upload your own videos and gives you a public presence on YouTube. If you already have a Google account, you can use it to sign into YouTube. Just enter the email address that you would use for other Google products. For example, if you have a Gmail account, use that email address and password when you sign in. If not, you can easily create a Google account directly from YouTube. Start by going to youtube.com or opening the YouTube app. If you're on a computer, click sign in, then click create account. From here, you'll be asked to fill in your information. If you're on a mobile device, select the profile picture icon and then tap sign in. You'll see a plus sign which you can select to add an account. Choose Create Account from the sign-in page. Now that you're signed in, there's a lot you can do. You can like and dislike videos, save videos to watch later, subscribe to your favorite channels, manage your watch history, or flag videos that you don't think should be there. And more. The more you watch and interact with videos, the better your recommendations will get. Once you're signed into YouTube, you can also create a YouTube channel. This is how all of your favorite YouTube creators got started. And you can too. To get started, try any action that requires a channel, such as uploading a video, posting a comment, or creating a playlist. If you don't have a channel yet, you'll see a prompt to create one. And who knows, you might be the next big YouTube star. If you'd like to learn more about getting started on YouTube, check out the links in the description below. And that's it. Subscribe for more YouTube tips and tricks. Okay, awesome. So, okay, you guys, uh, it was nice um, seeing you. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, and I can't. I wanted. I want to subscribe to your YouTube channel. So, um, I will see you there. Okay. Have a great school year. Bye.